Hello class, in this video we're going to go over how to create something that looks like this uh, using blend modes and a combination of two image files. Even though I have uh, various uh, samples, uh, various layers here, we really only need three layers. So on one layer, let me go ahead and just hide it, we do have our background. Uh, we do have our image, uh, this is using blend modes, and then on another layer we have a layer mask which is a copy of the original image but it's only highlighting uh, keeping uh, in view just certain pixels so we're going to go over this example now so I'm going to go into file I'm going to go to open and within the files that we are using these uh, week 7 blend mode images I want to open up this image 05. I actually want to start off with this one. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to open. So we have our image right here. I'm going to change this from the background. If you remember, the background is the lowest layer. Uh, I want to be able to put layers underneath it. So if you double click on this layer on the right hand side, it opens up this window. This is to convert this to, from a background to a standard layer within Photoshop. I'm just going to call this uh, guy in jacket. Guy in jacket. I'm going to tell it OK. So now I want to go back to file open and this time I want to open up my background image and this is image 04, my city skyline. I'm going to tell it open because what I want to do, I want to copy this background into this image here. So I'm going to go ahead and with this image on the right hand side, right mouse click, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to duplicate layer. But I'm going to make sure that I send this file uh, to my image 05, the white bomber jacket. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to OK. And now I'll okay, close this, this file. We have something that looks like this. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, command or control minus to zoom out a bit. I want to change. I want to change the layer order. I'm going to rename this one from background to uh, skyline. Uh, city skyline. City skyline. Oops. And I want to change the layer stack the layer order. I want my city skyline to be layer wise underneath the guy in jacket. So I'm just going to click and drag it underneath it so we have something like this. The other thing that I want to do, let me hide the image of the guy. I want to make sure that I'm going to scale this up using my move tool and making sure that the show transform controls is turned on. I'm just going to click and drag this corner point so that it goes here. I could always scale it larger or smaller, that's up to you. So I'm going to go right here. And if you want to, you could click and drag this if you want to use a different portion of the skyline. Uh, I, I kind of want to use this portion right here. Yeah, actually, I, I like these two tall buildings on the left and right. So I'm going to focus on this area. We could always change this later on. I'm just going to scale this up a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and in the option bar, click on the check mark to apply this scale change. So now when I uh, go back to here, we have these two images, one on top of the other. I am going to duplicate our guy in jacket because I know I'm going to use this one for later. But let's go ahead and hide this copy for right now. We'll come back to this one later. So on this one, I want to be able to show the image of the skyline through this image. So we could just go straight to our blend modes and we could see which one does a good job. But notice how a lot of the detail just starts to disappear. Here's overlay, that looks pretty cool. But I want more of the details of the image above. So I'm going to leave it to normal for right now. Instead, I'm going to double click on this layer. Click, click. It opens up my layer styles. 
And this is where we're going to be able to focus specifically on the blend if. So right here it says blend if gray. And I want to change how it's going to blend with the layers underneath it. So I'm going to click and hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC because I want to separate these, these little stops right here. I'm going to click on one side. And you can see how now some of the image is starting to show through. We can always separate it even more. So I'm doing this for the lighter values. Notice this is happening. This is affecting the entire layer. I'm liking how the darks are. They're still relatively dark. But I want to keep make sure that I keep the color within his face. But once I start to change the lights, let's see, as I keep on going further out, we start to see more of the image come through. Let's see, we might want this. Now when I have something that looks something like this, I could go ahead and go through the blend modes and see what they offer if I like one over the other. Chances are I might like, I, I kind of like this lightened one right here, but let's keep on exploring to see what other options. This is overlay. I like this hard light. Now I kind of like some of the results that this is giving us. But we could always change some of the options, some of the different views that we have. So I think I want this hard light. But you can see by selecting hard light, I'm going to go ahead and select it. Let me go ahead and continue to further manipulate some of these options. I get more of the clouds in there now. So what I'm going to do here, I, I kind of like what we have right here. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. But you could see within the face, uh, within the darks right here, maybe I want to keep those. Now, before I do that, I want to remind you that I could always double click on this layer, Guy with Jacket. You see this little icon? This is because I'm not necessarily applying a typical layer style, but I am applying layer styles to this layer. Let's uh, zoom in a bit, Command or Control-0 to zoom in. I'm going to double click on this layer. And we could still change this layer to get a different result. Maybe you like something that looks like this. And if you like one of these other options, you could still further adjust the settings that might work better for one of these different blend modes. But I definitely like the this hard light. I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK. But now I'm going to hide these two layers and I'm going to reveal the copy of this layer. Because now what I want to do, I want to try to easily and efficiently be able to select this portion of my image. I'm going to use some of the selection tools that are available. Because we have such a good contrast, I believe under our selection tools using the object selection tool, which could be hidden behind the magic wand or quick, quick selection tool. You can always press W or Shift W. I'm going to go ahead and just make a marquee selection. I'm going to zoom out a bit because I want to be able to make a, a marquee selection here. And once I do this, check this out. It gives me a really decent selection. There's an area that was, wasn't added and go over that. And just like that, I was able to select his face. I'm going to continue to, maybe I also want this portion. And notice that for my selection tool, I have the add up here in the option bar. All of these are adding to my selection. I'm going to go ahead and try to add all of the dark values of the, of the bottom of the shirt. Let's see, can we add this portion? Let's add some more. 
Come on, Photoshop, you could do it. You could do it so close to this little area. Now, I want to add the watch as well. So we're adding some of these different areas. Now you can see some certain areas there, it's adding too much or too little. That's okay. I'm going to start off with this because we are going to further manipulate this. With any type of selection, we could always clean it up. So I'm going to switch now to my lasso tool. I could see that there's small little areas that are selected here. You can see like for some reason I have these little ones. I'm going to go ahead and just make a little selection around them using, I'm still in the add mode. So I'm adding these little areas. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, go right here and I'm just going to add this little area that wasn't added. You see this this area right here? It added too much. Now, I'm going to leave it right there because I'm going to show you how we could uh, remove it in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, Command or Control Zero. Since we have a selection, we have our image selected, let's apply this as a layer mask. And once we have our area selected, I'm going to apply this as a layer mask in the in my layers uh, panel at the bottom down here. I'm going to click on this little uh, s rectangle with the circle in it, add layer mask, click, and we have something that looks like this. I'm going to double click on my layer mask, double click, and we have this, and I want to clean this up. I want to get rid of this white. I want to get rid of some of these areas here. So in my toolbar over here on the top left, I want to make sure that I have this Refine Edge Brush Tool selected. And within here, I'm going to zoom in, Command or Control Plus. And right now, we have the Plus selected. If I go over this area, you can see that it's starting to start to remove some of those areas. I'm just going to go around the edge and you can see how I'm getting rid of some of those values. Now say for example these highlights, what if I want to get rid of those? So I'm just going to go over it and you can see how it's getting rid of the white value. I'm just going to go along the edge here so it's giving me a, a sharper selection. Uh, I want to remind you that over here in the top right hand corner on the properties I do have the overlay. I could change this to on black, on white, the marching ants, but I'm going to leave it to overlay because you can see as I go over this area, some of the pink from the overlay is showing through. And I want to make sure that my brush is just slightly large enough, not too large, not too small. And it's refining my selection as I go through it. So all this area right here, I want to be able to see some of uh, the layers underneath show through. So this is where the the uh, zipper is at. So this tool, again, it's the a refined edge brush. So it's refining this edge. And this tool, it's doing a really good job simply because there's such a big um, contrast between the image and the background. Oh, let's uh, do the watch as well. I'm going to zoom in. Now, if it adds too much, you could always go to the minus, or you could always press and hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC. You can see it kind of adds more to it, but then I could go over it again. I'm going to make this smaller. You could always just switch to the brush tool. I'm going to make my brush smaller. See, it's adding those pixels, or I could hold down Option and I could just have it specifically delete those pixels there. 
I'm going to switch back to my refined edge brush so that it gives me a slightly better refinement. So now I have something that looks like this. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK because it's just refined my selection. Now I bring back my other layers. I'm going to bring back my city skyline first. And then I'm going to bring back my image on the background. And I have something that looks like this. Some of the areas that now stand out, I could hide my top layer. You could see what stands out. I could always select my background. Uh, using my move tool, V on your keyboard, you could scroll, uh, let's see, right. make sure you have the right layer selected. You could scroll this background. You're supposed to be able to scroll the background. Let's see, let me click on this. Let's zoom out. I'm going to use my arrow keys. I'm going to uh, left and right. You can see how it's moving. If you want these to move pixel by pixel, you just press left or right. Hold down shift and it's jumping 10 pixels at a time. So you can see which one might work better. There's that other tall building. So you want it centered. So we could decide which area we like better. Those two tall buildings kind of start to disappear. Or what you could even do, you could even just scale your image for that matter. So it's a lot larger. So maybe I want something like this. The good thing is you get to experiment and try out these different methods, these different techniques. And I want you to be able to experiment. Experiment with this tool, with blend modes, with this image. For your assignments, you have two options, either to recreate this image right here uh, using your own style, your own decision making, uh, or you're able to uh, create uh, this one, which we did in the previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this. So I don't think I want that building there. I'm going to leave it right here off to the side. And I could save this file. And there you go. You're going to be submitting just your PSD file uh, with your layers. And I hope you enjoy working with blend modes. I look forward to seeing what you're able to create. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know. Otherwise, have fun and create.